Hello YouTube, I call myself Zondagskind and I like to play Civilization 6. What you're about to see is a history mockumentary based on a game I played with Rough Rider Teddy Roosevelt. What's relevant gameplay wise is that I played on a Terra map, i.e. everyone was on the same landmass, with the Secret Societies, Heroes and Legends and Apocalypse game modes. Boiling down 9 hours of gameplay to a 9 minute video was really hard. I'd wanted to do it to celebrate becoming an affiliate on Twitch, but I severely underestimated the time sync. So I guess it's a Christmas present now. Stick around after the end for some end of year reflections. I hope you like it because a video this elaborate is something I can genuinely only do twice a year. It's ostensibly narrated by Geoffrey Chaucer, a great writer I recruited in this game so I thought that would be fitting. But without further ado, here is my history mockumentary. Enjoy! From the cold hills of Istanbul to the ancient temples of Tenochtitlan, America reigns supreme over our continent. Today, we will see how America rose to prominence under the leadership of President Theodore Roosevelt. From war leaders like El Cid and Sun Tzu, to the units that they commanded into battle against our many enemies. From the great architects of our state, to the wondrous buildings that they left behind. My name is Geoffrey Chaucer, I'm a humble scribe in service of the American government, and this is the story of America. The story of our people begins in a time before these stories could even be written down. The Appalachian Mountains were home to many tribes for millennia. Appalachia City, today our proud capital, is one of the oldest settlements in the world. Located at the heart of the continent, the Americans had contact with all neighbouring tribes before writing was even developed. Not much is known about the nature of conflicts that took place during these ancient times. Historians suggest they were local skirmishes conducted by scouting tribesmen to try and abduct local civilians to Appalachia. It is not known what the contribution of abducted civilians was to the building of the Pyramids of Appalachia. One of the first written histories is about a great war against the Aztecs. Eagle warriors besieged the city of Benbridge, just as in the north the Pyramids of Appalachia were being completed, our oldest masterpiece of architecture. Only with the aid of a legendary hero by the name of Beowulf could the war be won. Beowulf, according to legend, fended off the initial invasion nearly single-handedly and, under his leadership, American warriors pushed back the Aztecs beyond the mountain passes, saving America from ruin. After a raid in which Beowulf heroically attacked and sacked Teayo, the Aztecs finally accepted peace. In the early oligarchic era, America started to foster trade and diplomacy with lesser states. The city-states of Kumasi, Nazca and Buenos Aires committed to supporting our endeavours. The latter was swayed by a particularly talented diplomat and commander by the name of Himiko. Historians agree she was a real person, dispatched to Buenos Aires for negotiations, and not a moment too soon. In Cascade, Ottoman catapults were seen reaching the borders of the province. Himiko convinced Buenos Aires to aid in the defence, as war was clearly imminent. Seeing his window of opportunity close on him, Suleiman the Lawgiver did, indeed, declare war, sending his troops east to besiege Cascade and south into the Buenos Aires lines. Using all the resources they could muster, the Cascadian citizenry hastily set up simple defences. However, these would soon buckle, and the city remained in mortal danger. Seeing the walls crumble, Cascadian miners set up a diversion and let themselves be captured by the Ottoman vanguard. Just in time, the American Argentine infantry came running through the Pyramids Pass, shattering the siege party and destroying their machinery. Soon, First Consul Roosevelt vowed to turn the tables and take the fight to Adana. Adana proved a vulnerable target but between it and the Ottoman heartlands lay the treacherous Pantanal swamps, which saw many bloody battles. It was only when Chief of Staff, General Sun Tzu, travelled north to personally oversee the fighting that the war against the Ottomans accelerated. 
By copying their siege engines, the American army soon found itself advancing on Halep, Konya and Istanbul, and the Ottomans found out the hard way that, as Sun Tzu wrote, victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. Before long, Istanbul fell, and Suleiman fled to Izmir where he was taken prisoner, his empire ruined by the war he himself had started. The latter stages of the Ottoman war coincided with a boom in architecture and a transition into a mercantile republic with Theodore Roosevelt as the Grand Doge. Jebel Bakal was erected in Cascade to commemorate the miners who had helped defend the city. The Terracotta Army Memorial in the capital honoured those who had given their lives fighting. Petra Desert Palace gave a much needed boost to commerce in the barren north, while people in the eastern lowlands began to spend their free time in the Great Bath of Ebero. Finally, the Ministry of Defence was given a new headquarters in the Red Castle of Benbridge. These buildings, still standing today, are the architectural highlights of the American heartland. However, jealousy would lead to more war. After the fall of Adana, America faced a coalition of the Maya and Grand Colombians, who woefully underestimated America's lust for conquest. Cities on the borders were swiftly taken, even before Chief Armourer Lieutenant General Timur oversaw innovations in the use of gunpowder. Heavy cavalry formations looted the outskirts of Wakapnal, while the situation inside grew increasingly desperate. After the musket-bearing infantry had weakened the defenders, the Knights of the Republic stormed the city centre. In short, the coalition did not achieve its goals. After losing her elite chivalry in the Battle of Cuenca, the Maya Queen, Lady Sixkai, was deposed by her own people in the Revolt of Machu Picchu. With the war against Gran Colombia continuing, a Spanish knight with the moniker El Cid joined the American High Command. Perhaps angered by this defection, King Philip II demanded that Americans stand down their defensive border garrisons. To this, there could only be one answer. A questo es absurdo. Despite first being introduced in the Grand Colombian Theatre, the Rough Rider units are commonly associated with the Spanish-American War, specifically the Siege of Toledo. The Rough Riders were free to roam the countryside and wear down the garrison. While the city did manage to erect walls, these were no challenge for Kumasi's musketman militia, who reinforced and smashed through the gates. After the capital of Bogota had been captured, and Colombia reduced to a collection of coastal outposts, Simón Bolívar accepted a brutally unequal treaty. In the southeast, the Acadian Legion liberated Xochicolco from Spanish occupation and returned it to the Aztecs. Madrid and its great library would, however, become a part of the serene American Republic. Left with only one city, Lord Mayor Philip sued for peace. America is more than just an army. Among its greatest minds are scientists like Emily du Châtelet, who lectured in the University of Ebro. Amon ibn Fatlam broke a trade deals with city-states, while Nzinga Bande led the army in the most recent war, which we will discuss momentarily. On a personal note, I received the honour of being employed by the Great Library in Madrid, where visitors can read my poems. Bladesmith Jean d'Arc's masterpiece, The Grass Cutting Sword, is on display in the Temple of Adana, while Admiral Himerios is currently exploring the wide oceans. The American people increasingly realised how great their nation had become, and with the pride came a desire to fight one last foe, the eternal foe. The myth of Beowulf fighting the Aztecs became so popular that the populace demanded that the president declare war. The Aztec monarch Montezuma was blindsided that America changed on a dime from being an ally to being an occupying force, and he had no answer to Zingabane's march in Tenochtitlan. Her artillery rained hellfire on the walls of this ancient metropolis. Coordinating a defence became even harder for the Aztecs when the American infantry and heavy cavalry also assaulted Texcoco, near the Beowulf Pass. The border city was the first to capitulate, which meant Teayo, known to many soldiers as the final resting place of Beowulf, was now vulnerable. The battle for Teayo was short, but intense. After the initial artillery barrage, Rough Riders collectively stormed the city, and by the end of a hard-fought battle, Beowulf's tomb was in American hands. Tenochtitlan's walls were already down, and from the north came the army to complete its conquest. America had achieved 
total victory. Hi, it's me again. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, then please leave a like. Also, I would love comments specifically for this video, since it was a lot of work and I'm happy to hear what you did and did not like. If you'd like to know when I post more videos, they'll usually be less labor intensive, then subscribe and ring the bell. If you want to watch me play games live, I stream every week on twitch.tv slash Sonnachskind. And if you're still here, apparently you're interested in my end of 2022 ramblings. So, this year I started streaming, slowly but surely. On New Year's Day I was one of the people who got to talk to the game mechanic on his New Year's stream, and I think that's when I realized I could see myself trying this out, but I never got around to it. That was until I was invited onto the Civ show to make a multiplayer challenge and played with them on stream. That was a ton of fun, and at that point I had the tools to actually get going. It's been way more fun than I would have expected actually. It's so great to play a game and simultaneously talk to other people who know and like this game. I've only just gotten started. Every week there is something I add to the Twitch channel or the YouTube or the Discord server. And that makes it continuously exciting. Here on YouTube, I think a highlight was seeing the first analytics on the Victoria 3 Bolivia series and seeing the plurality came from Bolivia. I mean, I know how excited I get when someone plays any game as the Netherlands and I hope I can give that feeling to many different people across the world. For 2023, the first goal is to actually just keep doing this and that's not as easy as it sounds. This spring is going to be really busy, so I will have less time, but I want to keep streaming once a week and post something here regularly as well. I don't know what's a realistic goal in terms of subs and followers, so I play that by ear. Right now it's 98 followers on Twitch and 26 subs on YouTube, so let's see where we are next year. Anyway, I hope that all your winter holidays have been amazing, that you feel good about going into 2023, whether that be because you were sick of 2022 or because you have high hopes for the new year. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay kind, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!